Like and subscribe in the next 5 seconds, or this will be in your bed tonight. What's your biggest flex that you'll never tell anyone? When my girlfriend and I worked at the same bar, I threw a coaster at her like a frisbee. It arced over her and like 20 customers only to land perfectly on the neat stack of other coasters like 50 feet away. It was so fucking cool but nobody noticed except one customer who I later had to kick out for taking a nap on the bar. No point in telling anybody, but I look back fondly on that moment. Edit. I'm pleased to see that I'm not the only unrecognized Jedi. Neat stories. Everyone. I saw the guy throw a dart once and hit the backside of a dart already on the board. He was standing really far away in an attempt at flexing, and achieved way harder than he ever intended to. We had camera phones and took pictures, but nobody believed the story anyway. He was really let down that I was the only one who noticed. So I kinda understand this story on a spiritual level. I'm sure your toss was amazing. Edit. I'm getting a lot of responses that this isn't very rare. It's interesting to learn that, but to quote myself in response to another user below, seems that way. A few people are coming out of the woodwork saying they've seen it before. The thing that really made it stand out was how far away he was, like 30 feet, and he only threw the one dart. It's not like it happened incidentally during a game or whatever. There was one dart on the board and he threw one dart bragging about his accuracy. He was full of shit but it was awesome to witness how ha. But thanks for the input. I once hit a golf ball from 30 feet away into a sand trap, where it bounced off a rake and over an embankment, striking the flag and falling directly into the hole which I could not see from where I took the shot. There was only one witness, and nobody else believed us because it was so unlikely. In my public speaking class I had to give a speech on procrastination. I wrote the speech an hour before class. In my feedback notes I was told I had great preparation. The expert. This reminds me that for our final speech in my public speaking class in college, we had to hit the 3 minute mark to get full points for length. I wrote a fake graduation speech the night before that was consistently 30 seconds too short, but otherwise pretty good. So I got to class early before the professor on the first day of speeches and told everyone who was there that I would volunteer to go first if they clapped like hell the first time I said a year in my speech. I wanted them to do it so that my speech would run long. And the longer mine ran the fewer people had to give their speech that day. So it was a win-win. Professor came in about 30 seconds before class started, as usual, and was totally oblivious. I volunteered to go first got up and started my speech, and made a point of drawing out and welcome to the class of 1998. I was half convinced it wouldn't work at all, but oh my god did it turn out beautifully. The class erupted in cheers and applause and I felt like I'd just won a million dollars. The professor was so startled that he almost fell out of his seat, and it was a solid 1-2 minutes of cheering, which is a long time. Before he got everyone to shut up and let me finish the speech, I ended up getting a 98 on the speech and had several people try and copy the cheers, with varying degrees of success. It sounds fake as hell half the times I try to tell it, but definitely one of my favorite memories from college. I saw a lizard in the middle of a busy road. I bent down on the side of the road and called for it as I put my hands out and he ran straight into my arms. I carried him to safety and didn't think anything of it until I heard a stranger behind me go. Did y'all see that shit? She's a lizard whisperer. Man I wish there was another witness because I bet I looked cool. My lifelong best friend's mom was a lover of reptiles. She used to have a broom in the back of her Mazda to tow stubborn snapping turtles across the road and notoriously rescued countless animals. Reading this made my heart happy. I couldn't help but picture her at the side of the road cheering you on. R.I.P. to an amazing lady that encouraged children to look beyond the scaly to see the wonderful and cheers to you for helping random critters that cross your path. Red Heart. I saved a baby squirrel the same exact way. I didn't think about how crazy it was that the squirrel came running and hiding in my jacket till later that day. Four lane busy road. And its mom was roadkill in the middle of it. And it was frantically investigating its mom as cars drove by. Still breaks my heart. Woman in my office had a fairly long piece of TP attached to her shoe and I stepped on it and detached it from her shoe. I felt like a superhero. I still feel like a superhero about it. Bless people like you.
I once had a server purposefully drop something next to our table, just so she could have an excuse to bend over and grab the toilet paper off of my shoe. I still think about her from time to time. One time I was taking an order at a table back in the day at Chili's. The woman on the end kind of jostled her purse and something fell out. Without thinking or looking I bent to pick it up for her, looked at the object as I handed it to her. It was a dildo. I saw Elton John in Vegas, Red Piano Tour, during Benny and the Jets, I can whistle extremely loudly, I nailed the whistle part that is on live version of the song that plays on the radio, he smiled. I saw him live once while he unfortunately was battling a bad flu, still sounded fucking amazing though, and at one point he turned around to throw up in a bucket behind the piano, we were in the seat sort of behind the stage. Supposed to be the cheap seats but he always turned around and acknowledged us so it was great. And just cheered as loud as we could to show support and he laughed and put his finger up to his mouth as if to say SSH. It's a secret. Mad props to him for still performing even though he was sick enough to throw up. I can make the price of any stock go down simply by buying it. I can do that too. What if one of you buys a stock and the other shorts it? I keep light up sketches under my bed to walk around the house at night. Eugene is. When I was in high school we did a toy drive with our homeroom classes around the holidays where each class was assigned a family in need to donate money to or buy toys for. By the last day almost none of the toys had been bought from the kids lists. We'd just collected a modest chunk of money for the family. I went home and told my mom that I didn't need anything but I would like to get some of those things the kids asked for. My mom and dad talked. They'd both grown up poor and knew the money we'd collected would probably be used on necessities, not toys. So my mom and I went out and came back home with about $300 worth of toys the kids had asked for. I brought them in early before school started and submitted them and the receipts for them to my homeroom teacher. Later on one of my classmates, who I had great disdain for ever since the third grade when he blatantly stole my new pencil, came in and announced he was making the biggest contribution of our class with a $40 donation. The teacher made eye contact with me but I remained neutral and shrugged, so the teacher didn't correct him, just smiled and said thank you to him. I figure he needed that affirmation more than me and I never liked being center of attention anyway. Edit. Thanks everyone for your kind words and stories. 14 year old me, and her parents, never thought so many people would think so highly of their small act of charity. You are more humble than I could ever be freaking power move. Edit. Thank you guys so much. I've been going through a hard time lately and just the fact that I've gotten so many upvotes is really surprising. Along with an award too. So anyway THX. I love this. A true moment in your life that probably paved the way for your moral compass to be truly legit AF in your adult life. I have gotten to a place in my life that unless I tell someone, it is nearly impossible to tell I have autism. Edit. Thank you so much for the awards. Same dude. Whenever I tell anyone I always get the wow I never would have known. Reaction. I'm not a big fan of people saying that I don't look autistic though colon. Edit. Thanks for the awards guys. D. I got you bro. You look autistic. Had a class where the professor was pissed that everyone did really bad on an essay and was yelling at the class. He said that aside from one person who got a 97% he was disappointed with everyone there. I had the 97%. Similar thing happened to me in an English class junior year of high school. Assigned some book. Maybe to kill a mockingbird? And I read it like 5 times before the exam. Teacher said that he curved it to the highest score and no one had ever gotten a 100% in all his years of having the test. Just before he started passing the tests back he asked me how many times I read the book. I was shy and quite in high school so having every eye on me sucked. But anyways he said he was impressed and I ended up getting extra credit on it because he curved it to the next highest score. I raised $100,000 for a scholarship fund in the memory of my deceased twin brother. Since that time we've given away over 200 scholarships. I'm sorry about your brother. But it's amazing you were able to help so many people. 3. I made a Minecraft tutorial video when I was 15 that got 20k views. Edit. Link for the curious note. It's in Dutch. What was the tutorial about? Minecraft Dutch. 
I lived with my grandparents my whole life who lived in a small little house across the street from a big fancy neighborhood development. They lived in the same house for 40 years before the development. It was a very bad hill on a busy road with the neighborhood entrance at the bottom of the hill which was across the street from our house. Me and my grandpa would pull people out of wrecks all the time. Saved a bunch of lives but sadly saw over 10 people die on that hill growing up. The big fancy people in that neighborhood would always bring us food and gifts. They called my grandpa the gatekeeper. Honestly this could be a really interesting movie. I call it Hillanthropy. Edit. Oh my god I wasn't even trying to make a good comment on this one. All I thought was oh it's definitely too late for anyone to see it but I really think it would be a cool movie thanks for the upvotes. I wrote a popular and successful fanfic years and years ago. I still live on that high. Edit. I am considering revealing it maybe. Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven where is that you? No I wrote pounded in the butt by my own butt. I have a no gag reflex. This will go to my grave. Married man with three kids. How did you find out? It was just a phase. We don't talk about that. I ran over a half marathon at night for 5 months every day. I shouldn't be proud because that was my lowest point mentally but I was. Eater. Jesus I went to sleep and woke up to 80 not ifs. Thanks. I wanted to add that it was because of an obsession with exercise. For those who were confused as to why I don't want to be proud of it. It wasn't healthy and fucked up my body for a little while. You sound like a close friend of mine that did does a lot of night running due to insomnia. I wish my insomnia made me active. Damn. I am on the top page of the high scores for runa crafting in the game old school runescape. Edit. Since my comment made it to r slash 2007 scape. If any mods from r slash 2007 scape see this comment. Please unban me from the sub I. How did you have time to write this comment? Shouldn't you be grinding? I have a friend who plays RS on multiple accounts. I once saw him playing 4 RS games at once, while playing a completely different game on another screen. And, if I recall correctly, browsing I on the third, I believe he's getting an ADHD test soon. I have enough old, valuable Magic the Gathering cards to buy a car. A new, really nice car. I don't tell anyone IRL because they're from when I was young and collected them. And my current social circle would think it's kid nerd stuff and wouldn't understand. Doesn't get me down. Though, current plan is to hold on to them until they go up enough over time to match my mortgage balance. Then use them to pay off my house. Edit. I appreciate all the comments. I currently actively keep up with the MTG market. And I'm a pretty close follower of them to finance up. As far as the makeup of the cards. RL cards. Mostly from 9394. And complete sets from Urza's block and earlier. Consider a safety deposit box. Floods. Fires. Mold. ETC can really kill your valuables. Edit. Thanks for the silver and other awards kind strangers. They are in a safe location. My debit card went through for a really large amount and the lady behind the counter had been being so smug and irritating for so long and then she tried to deny my card because it wouldn't go through for that amount and I asked her to just please try it. The look on her face when it went through was so satisfying. May I never make that larger purchase again. Fuck that lady. The fuck does she know about your credit debit limit? Just swipe the damn card Karen. Right? She had turned me away once before and demanded I bring a checkbook. But I forgot it and was basically begging her to try my card. Whenever I think about telling this story, it always comes out with a that happened type of feel. So I have kept it to myself. Every day in junior year of high school I would eat my lunch, stand up, and toss my trash toward the wide mouthed trash can about 25 feet away. Every day, I would miss. I would then routinely do the walk of shame to get it all thrown away. This went on until the spring. It was April or May. I forget when exactly. And I stood up and threw my trash at the can. What do you know? After a few months I made it. It was a small victory but I did an air fist and then made eye contact with a kid who was in the marching band with me. Apparently he had watched me do this ritual every day and was ready to celebrate with me. So he began to slow clap. Then, 
The rest of his table clapped. Not knowing why but it was high school so who cared. Then the effect spread until the entire cafeteria, about 1500 students, were giving thunderous applause. Only two of us knowing why. I took a bow and then sat down and everyone just went back to eating their lunch like nothing happened. Because nothing really happened. It was a weird rush. The that happened feel of everyone clapping could definitely seem like a possibility to someone hearing the story. But lem tell you. At my high school if you were in the lunch room and someone started clapping. Nobody could know what they are clapping for and still the whole room would be clapping just for the fun of it. And everyone clapped. I bought some then relatively worthless apple stock because I thought I'd be able to eBay the stock certificate with the rainbow apple logo when the company went out of business. My investment guy just thinks I'm really clever. I've not corrected him. Do you have a picture of the certificate to post? I like looking at older certificates. Not too long ago somebody posted one of Disney. Wish they still did that. I too like looking at certificates but only in person. If could mail it to me that would be great. I discovered, verified, and reported a critical security flaw in a US Army computer system, which was then quickly patched. Imga.com link. Seems especially relevant these days, though it was over a year ago. For future reference, on the off chance that you ever find something similar, Dodd actually has a hacker one page. Korean here. Please go on of course I'm from the south. So please go on. Only a North Korean would specify I'm from the south nice try Mr. Spy. I never get bored, ever. It's a useful superpower when I'm stuck in certain situations. I'm never interested. Edit. My first awards and highest rated comment ever is about not being interesting in anything is so on brand for me. I have depression. 2. Serious. I can count all of the syllables in every sentence during conversation. Then I can tell the person I was talking to the amount of syllables they had just said. It's due to a weird response from my social anxiety. I don't tell anyone IRL because it's just weird and out of place to do so. They would call me crazy. I even have some common sentences and phrases memorized so I can take solace in the fact that I already know the syllables. Edit. Played video games for some time and came back to- Oh my flipping goodness that's a lot of awards. My most awarded and upvoted comment of all time is about me counting syllables. I is weird. Edit 2. Frequently asked questions. I can hold conversations with zero issue. The syllables go to the back basically. For example. During a test you just kind of know the answer and automatically bubble the answer without thinking about it. Same with retrieving the syllable count. It's really satisfying to me if the syllables end in the tens. Like 10, 20 etc. I'm good at poetry normally and it does play a part usually. On the bright side, it's only mild cognitive dissonance if it didn't end in the tens place. I've never tried a haiku but I will in the morning. Edit 3 I gotta go to sleep now. It's almost 2 a.m. lol. I answered as many as I could. We'll try and respond again in the morning. Sorry I had a late start from playing GTA all night. You are weird. I like you. Thank you very much. 6. My biggest flex I keep quiet is that I made right about $15,000 playing a video game semi-professionally. Now is the time where people think stuff like that is cool but 2 years ago when it was happening I got made fun of by my girlfriend the one time I mentioned it. Edit so everyone knows. This is an XGF as to her making money playing video games was lame. But sex with other guys was still cool to her. I ended that faux relationship. Hate to break it to you. But that was cool 2 years ago and your girlfriend was just cruel. Who makes fun of someone for making $15,000 from something as fun as video games? Made 15k and it wasn't illegal? We need to celebrate. I'm on level 4000 in Candy Crush. Edit. I have spent $0 on the game. You are worse than my mom but she's strangely proud. Ugh. I'm on 8126. I have a problem. Paid off 40k in debt during quarantine due to no more daycare costs for 3 kids. And better paying job for the wife. Also dropped body fat from 14% to 7% using my ghetto ass home gym while everyone was complaining about the quarantine 15. 
went from having one family meal a week to almost daily. I don't tell anyone this obviously because there are people going through tough times, especially family and close friends and I can empathize with that as it hasn't been completely smooth and there were some stressful moments. But I am proud of what my wife and I were able to do in a relatively short amount of time but haven't shared any of this at the risk of alienating anyone. Congrats on everything. And being a considerate person. I beat morbid obesity, which spiraled into a violent battle with anorexia, which I also beat. I eventually went on to get into modeling, weightlifting, and more. Compare pictures of me now, with pictures of me from 5 years ago, with pictures of me from 10 years ago, and they all look like completely different people. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I haven't done opiates in 6 months. Flex on that all you want. That shit's not easy. I dropped a fry from my mouth and slapped it to try and save it. It landed back in the box. At one point I could sing along perfectly to we didn't start the fire. I still know most of the words but I'm always so embarrassed to sing in front of other people lol. I'm sorry but didn't Ryan start the fire? ETA thank you for the awards. Kind strangers. I was in the grocery store and saw an older woman standing in the aisle comparing what was in her cart to what was in her wallet, obviously counting to see if she could afford everything. Based on her body language as she walked away I could tell that the answer was no. So I took a 20 out and walked up to her and said, Imam, when you were over there just a second ago this fell out of your wallet. I handed her the bill and just walked away so she wouldn't be embarrassed if she figured out I was lying. I did hear her say thank you. So I half turned and told her you're welcome. Have a nice night. It was only $20. But I think it made a difference to her. And that felt amazing. Good on you. I was waiting in line at a cashier last year where the woman in front of me saw her card being declined while paying. She told the cashier she was going to her car and coming back. I just paid her bill while she was out and came across her going back in as I was leaving the store. You can tell when people are going through hardship at times and little things like this actually makes me think if more people helped each other like this, there'd still be hope for humanity. I was quoted on some literary website one time for something I said off the cuff in an argument. I also got to play a few shows with some of my favorite bands of all time. But I'm so far removed from that music scene now that no one I know would ever care about it except for me. I'm kinda in the same boat. I produced music for like 15 years. Signed to 7 different labels and have headlined shows. No one I hang out with now has any idea. My job is a remote monitoring gig where we work 12 hours shifts 4 weeks at a time. And there's always 3 of us in the center at any given time and it can get really slow on the weekends when nobody else is around the office. One of the guys I work with is this really quiet and soft spoken guy from Colombia. Really nice dude and cool to talk to, but just doesn't really ever say anything to anybody unless you initiate the conversation. I knew he was into music and played guitar from some of our prior conversations. So I brought one into the office one weekend to keep us entertained when things get slow. Well, turns out this dude is like really fucking good at guitar. Like so good that he makes a campfire guitarist like me feel embarrassed for having the audacity to own such an instrument. He had always said stuff like I play some guitar in my free time when I would ask what he did during his time off. Well we start talking more about it and he finally drops the oh well I played in a band for a little while in my younger days. Then I get a we were actually a pretty popular metal band in Colombia for a while. And then ask him how many people came to their shows. Oh I don't know. I think some of the arenas and stadiums held like 60k. Like bro. You can't casually tell people oh I dabble in guitar in my free time when the truth is I'm a metal god that sold out stadiums across South America for years. Granted that was in his 20s and now he's in his 40s with a normal white collar career and a wife and kids. But still. Edit. To everyone asking the band's name. I don't remember what it was because it's not really my style of music. I hadn't ever heard of them and don't listen to metal at all. I'll ask him next time I see him. But we're not scheduled to work together again until February. He was the lead guitarist and they were most popular in the early 2000s. Think he moved to the states in 2005 after the band shut down. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more interviews.